previously on Matu's Random Reviews. Get baked into a giant pizza. No! Lord God, Libra? Left my restriction, not powerless. Matt, Shane, Don't I do? So, how's it feel to have just been built? From now on, you'll be known as Kamen Rider q -Kid. Um? The way that missing goal was killed. So, uh, Master Will. Three high gods of creation. They both try to control two at the same time. Powerful enough to break the barrier between imagination and reality. I've been suppressing it the whole time. We're together allies who are good, in spite of being a god of neutrality. The stroll my soul was the combined spiral energy of several species. We devise a way to release Matthew's chaos power. Tell Rainier thread the evil Batman and Dark Decade who does not belong to any universe. I'll go first then, make you review crappy rendered 3D movies. Did you forget I can easily teleport away as I please? A Sword of Harmony? It won't let me wield it for some reason. The night will last forever! I do it instead, I like it. And now the continuation. Hello and welcome to Matthew's Random Reviews. Sorry for the wait. Before we begin, I need to address something that has changed since the last part. Moondancer has appeared in the show, and she looks nothing like she did in the comic. Well, mostly. These are officially supposed to be canon, right? Because they sure as hell do a good job breaking canon off. And I know that they don't really have much communication with the showrunners, but they really should because this is no way to make a canonical comic. <sighs> anyway, let's dig right back into the two-part pilot of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Part 2! Two. Two. Our episode begins with a previously segment. Don't get too used to these folks, they're mostly only used for season premieres and finales. After the credits, the Royal Guards prove to be completely useless. Stand back, you fools! <laughs> Wow, that pun sucked! Twilight runs back to the library, puts Spike to bed, and searches frantically through her books, only to be interrupted by Rainbow Dash, who has now become suspicious of Twilight. Are you a spy? No! I think not. The other four she met earlier arrive, and Twilight explains what's going on. But I don't know what they are, where to find them, I don't even know what they do! The Elements of Army, a reference guide! How did you find that? It was under E! Wow, Twilight, really? You're supposed to be the smart one. There are six Elements of Harmony, but only five are known. Kindness, laughter, generosity, honesty, and loyalty. The sixth is a complete mystery. It is said the last known location of the five elements 
was in the ancient castle of the Royal Pony Sisters. It is located in what is now <laughs> the Everbree Forest. Da, da, da. Twilight tries to convince the others to stay behind, but they insist and they enter the forest together. Eventually, Nightmare Moon causes part of a cliff to fall, and Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy save Pinky and Rarity respectively, while Applejack tries to pull Twilight up from a ledge. And here comes one of the biggest gripes I have with this episode. Applejack looks up and tells Twilight to let go, promising Twilight that she'll be fine. Not bothering to mention that Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy now have their hooves free so that they can come help. Hence why she looked up a bit of attention to detail there if you pay attention. Furthermore, Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy could have come down while Applejack was holding her up. This whole scene was pretty forced when you think about it. And while there is a reason for that, it could have been handled much better very easily. Nightmare Moon then gets the Manticore to go out of control. The Beast then attacks our six heroes except for Fluttershy fight back while Fluttershy is trying to tell them to stop and eventually musters the courage to stop them in their tracks. She then uses her special talent of dealing with animals and the Manticore reveals a thorn in its paw. Wait, seriously? The Manticore then thanks Fluttershy in its own way. Ew. I do have a bit of a gripe of how Fluttershy somehow managed to realize that it needed help, but I'm guessing this is related to her special talent, but alternatively... It pays to know your classic Aesop. Actually, she didn't know about the thorn at all. How did you know about the thorn? I didn't. Nightmare Moon then enchants a bunch of trees to have spooky faces on them. Now what? So they just have faces on them. How is this supposed to be scary exactly? Regardless, Pinkie Pie suddenly starts laughing. Okay, Pinkie's lost it. Musical number time. Oh, girls, don't you see? When I was a little filly and the sun was going down. She's not. The darkness and the shadows, they would always make me frown. She is. I'd hide under my pillow from what I thought I saw. But Granny Pie said that wasn't the way to deal with fears at all. Then what is? She said, Pinky, you gotta stand up tall. Learn to face your fears. You'll see that they can hurt you. Just laugh to make them disappear. Ha, ha, ha. You know, we still haven't seen her quote-unquote Granny Pie on this show. Then again, I've said the same thing about Moondance, which she showed up in Season 5 shortly after. So who knows, maybe Granny Pie will show up in a couple of episodes. They then reach a river and hear someone crying. <laughs> what a world! What a world! A metrosexual sea serpent with hair and a mustache. This show is full of surprises. Not fun of the fact that he has to have that voice and that behavior, though. We already have this sort of thing going on with Rarity. All aboard the stereotype train, choo-choo. Speaking of Rarity, we see her stereotype is at least portrayed positively. As when it comes to fashion, at the least, she's usually very generous. I simply cannot let such a crime against fabulosity go uncorrected! <laughs> Ow! Who did you do that for? Rarity, what are you- Yeah, mostly when it comes to fashion, though, and this fact will be important a little later on. Don't worry about her tailbone, by the way. All the images I found on Google Image Search suggest that only the upper half of the horse's tail contains bone. The sea serpent then returns the favor, and they cross safely. They nearly reach the castle, but the bridge is out. What's with you and falling off cliffs today? Ha, ha, ha. 
She could have died several times already. Rainbow Dash lies down to retrieve the bridge on the other end, but then a group of Pegasi appear and try to tempt her into joining them and leaving the others behind. It doesn't work, but Rainbow Dash does seriously consider it for a minute there. The Six are finally able to enter the castle where the Five Elephant the Six Elements of Harmony are. Twilight explains that when the Five are together, a spark is supposed to reveal the Six, but none of them understand what that means. She prepares a spell as the other leaves so that she can concentrate, however the dark blue mist that's been following them creates a vortex around the elements and warps them and Twilight away, but the other five manage to figure out where they went. Nightmare Moon appears with the elements, and Twilight charge ports past her and tries to ignite the spark in the elements again, and succeeds, but only momentarily. Nightmare Moon then stomps the ground, shattering the elements. All hope seems lost when Twilight hears the other five heroes approaching and realizes something very important. <gasps> you think you can destroy the elements of harmony just like that? Well, you're wrong, because the spirits of the elements of harmony are right here! What? Applejack, who reassured me when I was in doubt, represents the spirit of honesty. Fluttershy, who tamed the Manticore with her compassion, represents the spirit of kindness. Pinkie Pie, who banished fear by giggling in the face of danger, represents the spirit of laughter. Rarity, who calmed a sorrowful serpent with a meaningful gift, represents the spirit of generosity. And Rainbow Dash, who could not abandon her friends for her own heart's desire, represents the spirit of loyalty. The spirits of these five ponies got us through every challenge you threw at us. You still don't have the sixth element. The spark didn't work. But it did. A different kind of spark. I felt it the very moment I realized how happy I was to hear you. To see you. How much I cared about you. The spark ignited inside me when I realized that you all are my friends. <laughs> Nightmare Moon, when those elements are ignited by the... the spark that resides in the heart of us all, it creates the sixth element, the element of... magic! Objection! Your elements of honesty and loyalty are out of order, and Rarity does not properly embody generosity. I'll go into more details as to why I say this in future videos, and I'm sure a lot of you already know what I'm talking about. Anyway, it seems like the Rainbow Blast knocked our heroes for a loop there, and as they recover, they notice the elements took on new forms in the shape of necklaces and a tiara with gems based on their cutie marks, and Rarity's tail has somehow returned to normal. Just then, the sun rises and Celestia appears seemingly out of nowhere, which begs two very important questions. Where was she? And how is Nightmare Moon keeping her imprisoned, if at all? Thorn Fowl said that Celestia had done what she could to orchestrate Nightmare Moon's defeat for a reason we'll get into in a minute, which means that she had a reason to disappear of her own free will. But this leaves the gaping plot hole of Celestia not telling Twilight everything. I'll talk a little bit more about this later. Anyway, it turns out that Nightmare Moon was just an act of corrupted persona of Princess Luna, Celestia's sister. Twilight seems surprised like the others that they are sisters, but I'm pretty sure the book she read in the cult opening the previous episode actually mentioned this fact. But yeah, this is basically the main reason why Celestia wanted Nightmare Moon to be defeated. Celestia offers her friendship to Luna again, and Luna apologizes and the two bond for a moment. 
you, Pinkie Pie. Twilight feels conflicted about having to return to Canterlot after her making friends for the first time, so Celestia gives her a new mission, to study the magic of friendship in Ponyville with her new friends and report her findings. And there was much rejoicing, thus ending the episode. I completely forgot Pinkie directly broke the fourth wall in the Cyrus Rape. Honestly, she didn't break the fourth wall directly like that very often. And if she did, she doesn't anymore. I mean, you know, aside from that one time she struck the screen like freaking Deadpool, but yeah. Anyway, I think this pilot did a good job in doing what a pilot is supposed to do, introducing the characters and establishing the premise for what was then assumed to be the remainder of the series. Though later seasons did kind of mix things up a bit, but it mostly came down to Twilight and her friends learning about friendship up until season 5, which I'll get into another time. I really think that Celestia shouldn't have been so vague. It set up the all-too-real possibility that Twilight could have failed. It sort of makes me wonder if she had some sort of backup plan. I know she has plenty of faith in Twilight, but there's a fine line between having faith and pulling a Batman gambit with such a high probability rate for failure. Anyway, I give Friendship is Magic uh, Parts 1 and 2 a 3 out of 5. It was okay, but it's not the best introduction for new or potential fans of the series. Nightmare Moon and Batman? Now there's an oddly fitting duo. We kick it from here. I'll be watching from the shadows. Smoke Bob! <coughs> Let me guess. You want to make light last forever in this universe, but I'm in your way. I don't know what you hope to accomplish, powerful mortal people confused for a god basically has no chance of getting rid of me long enough for you to achieve your goals. Alright, have it your way. Guess I should try using this new Sword of Harmony. I <sighs> should have known this would happen. Hey, Wing, Cloud, you two have been working on a new fusion form, right? Maybe you could try wielding it together. You Shun Ha! The, the Wing Ace, Ace Doubling, Doubling Ace, Ace has, has arrived. arrived! Doubling Ace, seriously? Well, that was ominous. She's right, though. I scanned her earlier, and it seems she's from a world where the main six that failed to defeat Nightmare Moon, who freed Discord, and they teamed up. What happened to her, though? Isn't she supposed to turn into Princess Luna? Unfortunately, she was too far gone. You knowingly had us kill her? There was no other way. Without my intervention, she could easily escape any prism using a any number of methods, including turning into mist and using dreamwalking to trick people into helping her. And Libra won't let me help with that. You know my stance on killing. Why? Why would you have me do that? Sorry, Wingus. In all honesty, I didn't think things through enough. My soul might be that of an immortal now, but I'm still only human in pretty much any other regard while I'm stuck in this body. I think we're going back to our Ponyville Cloud apartment for a while. Come on, Cloud. <sighs> Tons of fun! A beautiful heart, faithful and strong. Sharing kindness. It's an easy feat. 